So we're back. And in the meantime, I did find a product which I think will be quite beneficial, especially for M4 Mac Mini users, or basically anyone that has a USB-C device for transferring data to and from different devices, or even just having it plugged in and using it as an external storage solution permanently, essentially. And this one is by Satoshi. It's a mini NVMe enclosure. Now this thing is tiny, but don't let the size fool you. Now, if it's your first time here, my name is Almey, aka Mr. Hechtech. If you like tech content and I do earn your subscription by the end of this video or by the middle of this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. If you do end up liking it, hit that like button, share it with your friends and family as that does help get the video pushed out on the algorithm and shared with more people and why wouldn't we want that? So without further ado, let's check out the Satoshi Mini NVMe enclosure and why I think this is quite a cool little accessory to have in your pocket. So part of this video is sponsored by iBuySoft, but we'll talk more about that later on. Talking about the Satoshi Mini NVMe enclosure, unlike other NVMe enclosures, the larger ones, they take the larger 2280 NVMe size drives or SSDs. This one actually takes the 2230, which is not as popular, but they are becoming a lot more popular just down to their size, but also they are capable of high speeds as well. So let's take a look at the actual Satoshi drive, how to put an actual NVMe in there, and what it's capable of. So taking a look at the Satoshi NVMe enclosure, now I can tell you straight away it has very good build quality and something I noticed right off the bat is this extended USB-C section here. You might be thinking, why is that? Well, if you're using this with say, for example, an iPhone or an iPad, something that has a thicker case on it, more often than not, you'll find things with these kind of enclosures that when you try and put them into the actual device, the USB section is not long enough and then you find issues where you have to take the case off to actually have it plugged in. So Tessie have thought about that and they've extended that USB-C section so there should be no issues there, which is a great little touch. Obviously it doesn't mean much for the M4 Mac Mini, but because this you, you can use on a wide variety of devices, that is a nice little touch. On the sides we have air vents, of course, because on the back with a fan that you should not cover, of course, for cooling purposes and then the heat will come out of the sides. On the front is also a nice clear screen, so when you do put your 2230 NVMe in there, it will be nicely visible, which I do like it. I think it's a lot nicer than having just a metal cover on the front. And then we've got this like lanyard holder section here. I don't even know what I would call it. What would you call this? Put it in the comments box below. And not only is it something that you can attach to to hold your NVMe enclosure, it's also an extender cable. So it's a two in one, and then you can use this for a specific purpose I'm about to tell you to plug in the drive in there and then plug that cable in to a port if you need that little bit of extension. The reason why this is important is if you're plugging this NVMe drive or enclosure into the back of your M4 Mac Mini, because the ports are so close together than Thunderbolt 4 or Thunderbolt 5 ports, and this is a little bit thicker. If you plug it into the middle, for example, the two ports on either side, you're gonna be blocking and you won't be able to plug anything in there. If you plug this onto either side, you're gonna be blocking the port right next to it. So that's why this extender cable comes in handy because this is nice and thin. You can plug it into whatever port you want and you don't have to have them issues of blocking another port. Now, because of the speed limit of this, it is a 10 gigabit connection in here. It's not Thunderbolt 4, it's not Thunderbolt 5. It's your standard 10 gigabit connection, which is very similar to them external SSD drives, for example, the speeds you'd get. Even if the NVMe you get for it is capable of, say, 3,400 gigab 4,000 gigabytes per second, this is only going to be limiting it to up to 1,000, 900 to 1,000. So bear in mind, you won't be getting them super fast speeds, now it would be cool if they did make that, a Thunderbolt 4 or a Thunderbolt 5 one like this, but I think that's further down the line for something like that. This is still very fast speeds for using on your Mac, editing from, or having it just as transferring data to and from different devices. If you're plugging it to the front of your device, because the ports are a lot wider apart, you will have no issues when you plug it in there. Now how you put a NVMe SSD inside, you'll pull this top off. Now it does have a locking switch on the side here, if you can see. Now I've personally, I've put it in lock, I've put it in unlock, and it opens 
both ways. Maybe it's different if the SSD is in there, but the locking one maybe is just a tiny bit harder to open. Now I have used other ones like this where the top is super easy to take off. Luckily the Satoshi one is not that easy to take off, so you don't have to worry about that. So we'll put it in unlock mode and take that off. Now you'll get your NVMe SSD. This one is a one terabyte one and pop it in there. And then what you do, this rubber grommet thing will be used. Just pull it back, push the drive down and let go. And now your NVMe drive is in there perfectly fine. Close it up and we're good to go. Now you can use this, whether if you haven't formatted the drive yet, you're gonna to have to do that. But now you can use this in the plethora of different devices, whether it be your iPhone, your iPad, your Mac mini, or even what I've been doing is if you're recording raw video on the iPhone 15, iPhone 16, you can plug this in, record directly to it and have that log footage ready to go when you need to edit it, which is a good little addition. And then plug it into your Mac and you're good to go. So let's plug it in and let me show you the speed you'll get from this on my system at least. So now that we have the drive plugged in, so let's do Blackmagic disk speed test first. Now the speeds you get for the M4 Mac Mini Pro, I'm gonna show you first. So this is the speeds on the actual M4 Mac Mini Pro. We've got 3,945 megabits and on the right and 5,000 on the read. Now we'll let it go a couple more times. But generally we've got around 4,000 megabits on the right, 5.1 on the read. Now if we test the external drive, where is it? There it is. Open that up and start the test. You'll see you it will average around a thousand megabits per second on the right and a thousand on the read just because of the capabilities of the actual connection on the NVMe enclosure. Now that's nothing to do with the NVMe drive in there because the NVMe drive I have in the actual enclosure is capable of well far beyond that, two, three thousand plus. But this is just something you should know when you're using one of these drives, you will be limited at that kind of speed. But still, very fast speeds should be perfectly capable for doing what you need to do. Now, what these drives are good for is transferring data to and from different devices. And speaking of transferring data, this is where today's sponsor comes in. So not everyone uses a Mac machine. Some people have a Windows machine at home and a Mac machine, or they have a Windows machine at work or school and a Mac machine at home or vice versa, which for the most part is perfectly fine until it becomes a little bit tricky. For example, if you have USB sticks, internal external storage, which is formatted to NTFS, which is a very good file format system for Windows because it offers good compression and fast data transfer speeds, but it's not so good for Mac. Now, if you plug in one of these to the Mac and it's formatted to NTFS, more often than not, nothing's gonna come up, nothing will pop up. If you do manage to somehow get into the actual system, then you're gonna see that it's only in read-only mode. So you can't really edit it or write any files onto the drive, which can be a bit tricky when you're trying to transfer data files to and from Windows and Mac. That's where iBoySoft and NTFS for Mac comes in, where using this application, when you plug in a NTFS formatted drive, to your Mac, you can easily access it, read from it, write to it, even format the drive if you want, and have that seamless experience between Windows and Mac transferring files and having no issues. Now, if this seems like something you might be interested in, do click that link in the description box below that will let you try out NTFS for Mac. And thank you iBoySoft for sponsoring this segment of the video. And let's get back to the video. So what I am going to do, I've got this Tashi NVMe enclosure running on the disk speed test. And this is essentially stress testing it, which is why the fans have come on. And I wanted to show you just how, I would say, loud or low the fans are when it comes to it. I'm going to try and pick it up, move my mic closer to the actual enclosure, and let me know what you think, if it's loud or not in your eyes. So let me know what you think. Is that loud or not? Because that's running at full speed. So you might notice that my M1 Max MacBook Pro that I had just over here is completely gone. That's because I've completely switched over to the M4 Mac Mini Pro. And I did that using that Satoshi NVMe enclosure, plugged it into the MacBook Pro, transferred all my files over, then plugged it into my M4 Mac Mini Pro and transferred all the files to there. It was super easy and 
Surprisingly, we went quite fast. So there we have it, a nice external storage solution in a mini NVMe enclosure with a mini NVMe SSD for, in this case, the M4 Mac Mini. Three minis make a right, eh? And of course, this one is this Teshi one. There is a bunch of different brands out there which have similar ones. They also have their benefits and their drawbacks. I will link them down in the description box below. I, I believe there is one by Charge as well, which is also good. But if this is something you're interested in, do check the description box below. There's gonna be a bunch of different enclosures like this and well-reviewed and well-priced drives in different storage sizes so you can pair with how you want it. Now, if I did own your subscription, thank you. Remember to hit that subscribe button below. Remember to like the video if you do end up liking it and share it with your friends and family who also might be interested in getting an external storage solution like this. And I will catch you on the next one. I appreciate sport. Have a great day.